Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this Wednesday edition of NMH at One. I am your host, Priska Agnolo, and thank you once more for joining us today. Heading straight into our COVID-19 monitor for today. Over the seven days up to Monday, another 39 healthcare workers tested positive for COVID-19. This is substantially less than the 51 infections in this frontline group than the week before that. However, Namibia's total cases amongst health workers is steadily climbing to the 2,000 mark. Most of the new cases were reported in Ventuk, totaling 11. Seven cases were reported in Kavango East and five each in the Oshikoto and Irongo regions. Oshana reported four cases, with five other regions detecting between one and two cases. No new cases among health workers were reported in the regions of Kunene, Omaheke, Omusati and Oshadonjuba. Tomorrow we will look at daily averages per district rather than quarantine data due to the public holiday on Friday. And now for our video news segment. Trade, Industry and SME Development Minister Lucia Ipumbu speaks to the Oshuarongo business community about the ministry's intervention to review costs, including electricity prices and rates in a bid to assist small businesses to be able to afford these services. Esther Kamati was there. The various SME and uh, industrial parts, we have a number of them in the region. We are aware of especially those that are idling. We have put in the mode of reviewing the costs that are payable for those facilities. And the NIDA is in an advanced stage of communicating back to the communities the new rates that we were going to look at. One of the challenges experienced in specifically on those facilities is at the level which they were arranged in terms of uh, electricity cost. Uh, if we are to look at the, the facilities we have that are idling, it's all a challenge of affordability. Most of them were built on a commercial rate and the electricity consumption was that of a commercial arrangement. But if you look at the reality on the ground of the SMEs that are making use of this, they cannot afford. And, and we have negotiated with the, the Ministry of Mines and Energy. We are also still negotiating with the Electricity Control Board for specifically the SME parts to be put on the household kind of arrangement, consumption of electricity because of affordability. Uh, the industrial parts is different because today we expect the, the industrial activities of, of high magnitude that would yield a better income to be able for us to afford the rates at the commercial. Jeremy Mueller, Executive Manager of COSDEF, explains to Irongos Irene Marie van der Valt what their cooperation agreement with the Namibian Maritime Fisheries Institute means for the Community Skills Development Foundation. Do take a look. So with me today is Jeremy Muller. He is the Executive Manager of COSDEF. Hi, Jeremy. How are you? I'm fine. So, I'm doing well. So, Jeremy, could you tell me what this cooperation agreement with NAMFI means to COSTEF? I think it's very important that training providers who are out here, especially also in the Rongo region and elsewhere, that they do collaborate more and that we do not work in self-isolation. Um, this way one can also avoid duplication of different types of training courses and see how we can complement each other. 
Dr. Christopher Mberima, Assistant Pro Vice Chancellor of UNAM's Orongo campus, speaks at the signing of Memorandum of Understanding between the University and the Oshana Region Council to partner up with the community. Tunohole Mugomba was there. The Oshana Region is also home to two other campuses of the University of Namibia. In fact, the largest number of campuses other than Windu, other than Commerce Region, is in Oshada Region. These other campuses, namely, as you know, the Ifike Punya Pohamba campus, which focuses on various programs in education, while the James campus, which stands for Jose Eduardo Dos Santos campus in Ongwejiva as well, is home to our prestigious School of Engineering and it covers various aspects of engineering and graduates, many engineers, Namibian graduates, Namibian trained engineers from Ongwediva in Oshana region. In addition, as Honorable Irimari just narrated, at Ogongo campus, although in Omsati region, focuses on agriculture programs, and also on forestry programs. As far as I can recall, Ogongo campus is the only institute of higher learning where forestry programs are actually uh, at, uh, um, at, uh, we're training in uh, um, where official training in forestry programs are uh, uh, is carried out. There is no other institute that I'm aware of of higher learning in Namibia which has a degree and qualification in forestry except of And now we look at the front pages of our Namibian newspaper dailies. Namibian Sun reports that former Attorney General Pendukeni Ivula Itana and former Finance Minister Sara Kokongelo Amadila are unwilling to go on record why they allowed Air Namibia to sign a devastating aircraft lease contract with no exit clause that will cost government billions after Air Namibia's closure. Republican reports that the fisheries minister, Dr. Albert Kawana, yesterday finally announced the allocation of fishing rights. During the allocation process that kicked off in August 29, 2018, that is meant to revolutionize Namibia's fishing industry, saw 213 new applicants granted fishing rights, while 85 old holders retained their rights. Algemeine Zeitung reports that an aquaponics project funded by the Finnish embassy aims to promote knowledge and understanding in the field of climate-resilient aquaponics. The Finnish embassy's program coordinator, Haneli Hapunan, yesterday said it was important for the community to take full responsibility for the project. The aim is to strengthen food security and to create new opportunities to secure livelihoods in communities. The Namibian reports that Fisheries Minister Dr. Albert Kawana yesterday announced a batch of around 298 new fishing rights holders by using a system that gave birth to the fish rot corruption scandal. Kawana made the announcement in Vintuk and insisted that the allocation were above board. New Era reports that Fisheries Minister Albert Kawana has warned government that will deal with harshly with new entrants in the fishing sector who use names of vulnerable citizens and charity organization to gain access to fishing rights without such entities benefiting. Kawana, who sounded the warning while publicly announcing the outcome of the 2018 fishing rights application process, 
also was lyrical about his ministry's efforts to transform the sector, which has been plagued by a corruption scandal implicating former cabinet ministers Bernard Esau and Saki Shangala, as well as business people. And moving on to the inside pages of the country's dailies. Namibian Sun reports that the latest departure at the National Fishing Corporation of Namibia is that of Company Secretary Josefina Nekongo, who threw in the towel earlier this month and is currently completing her notice period. Republican reports that three suspected rhino horn smugglers appeared in Ondangwa Magistrates Court on Monday and were denied bail. According to the head office of the Blue Rhino Task Force, Commissioner Berry de Klerk, one of the accused, Pendapala Herman, is out on bail in the sensational case of the theft of 33 rhino horns at Ocho. The Algamane Zeitung reports that Juso Kambweshe wants to appeal the decision of the Swakopmund City Council. However, the City Council will not be intimidated. During the recent Council meeting, it was unanimously decided that the cancellation of the sales of five plots of land to Kambweshe would be upheld. The Namibian reports that its editor, Tangeni Amupadi, has defended the newspaper's decision not to publish a review of a book written by a convicted child rapist. He said the book could not review, he said that the newspaper could not review a book that was based on defamatory accusations of corruption and maleficence, which was not supported by facts. Ex-prisoner Victor Angula's appeal against the decision of the media ombudsman, John Nakuta, in which he ruled in favor of the newspaper not publishing the book, was heard yesterday. New Era reports that swarms of locusts in the Kavango East and West regions have damaged about 854 hectares of crop fields since the outbreak, the Ministry of Agriculture has said. The locusts destroyed 583.12 hectares in the Kavango East, while about 271.5 hectares were damaged in Kavango West. However, the ministry said it was still busy verifying and collecting data as they have also embarked on the locust spraying activity. That is it for today. I've been your host Priska Agnolo, live for NMH at 1, wishing you to have a lovely day ahead and to please stay safe. Do stay tuned for the weather as well.